On Wednesday, July 26, 2023, Jenkins LTS 2.401.3 was released. In this video, we're going to be talking about all the things that happened in that release. My name is Darren Pope. I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. And along with me today, I have Mark Waite, who is a member of the Jenkins board. Mark, how are you doing? Great, Darren. Here we are at the end of another cycle. We are. It's, it's the dot three, and it's turned out to be a good release. It turns out to be a very short release, as we'll see in just a few moments, I believe. <laughs> okay. Uh, not a lot to describe. That's good. Not a lot to describe, which is good, which is what we want for the last of the next release. Mm -hmm. So, but if people haven't been here with us before, hi, by the way, thanks for hanging out with us for a few minutes today. Uh, and if they're not, a vi uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not familiar with what the Jenkins LTS process is. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain weeklies, LTSs, and, and do all that normal thing. Sure. So Jenkins releases a new version every week. It's intentional. We release like clockwork. Every Tuesday in general, we'll release a new weekly. Every 12 weeks, we choose a new baseline for the long-term support release. That baseline is selected and then it has a stabilization period and we backport changes as needed to that stabilized version and it becomes the weekly plus dot one. So 2.401 was chosen as, chosen as the weekly or as the baseline and then 2.401.1 became the first release of that base that LTS series. We then, four weeks later, released dot two with some additional changes that we found might be needed. And then four weeks later, we released dot three. That concludes a series of that LTS, and then we choose a new baseline and do it again. And that's where we're at right now. This was that's the dot three. Thankfully, just a dot three. We've seen dot fours before. We have, and, and the stories for why we might get something beyond dot three are, are interesting and varied, but thankfully infrequent. Very infrequent. Uh, before we get into it, Andreas, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Ray, hello to Thailand, because I'm not in Thailand. Mark is neither. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Ray. Uh, let's go and just take a look at the notes, because if you haven't looked, taken a look at the notes before, go to Jenkins.io. Upper right hand corner, download, or depending on how your layout is, in my case it's upper right hand corner. And then we're picking the change log under stable. So when we take a look at this, we can see for this case, 401.3, we have 16 shiny happy people, one not so happy person, whatever that one was. And really there's two here, but really there's just one. Correct. There's Do you want just one. Sure, because the, the second this. one doesn't belong there. Darren and I checked before this session to see where did that, when was that pull request merged? We looked in the Git history. That was merged in 2.411. 11, correct. Interesting. Oh, actually, no, you know what, Darren, maybe we were wrong now that I think about you it. You think? I'll have to look at the... Was I'll it backported? That's the question, is if it was backported, then, then it's there. So I may be wrong. We'll have to look separately. Okay. It's it's a minor one. It was literally just a change of some help text. So it's not it's not a big deal. Actually, it's not a big deal, but to me it actually was a little bit of a big deal. Oh, okay. Um, because it was specifically around when we changed from Etsy sysconfig to systemd, mm -hmm. which is actually it was a huge deal it, a, it, it, a year and ago, right? So, and and that's a fair point that this. This was making, a, the text was previously pointing people to make changes in files that we no longer read. And that's Correct. not a good thing, right? Yeah. We, if, if you're going to get help, let's give help that is accurate and helps people make the right change. Correct. So that may or may not be there in 413. We'll have to figure that out. Right. If it's not, again, it's so deep into it. How did you even trip across that? Let me ask you, because uh, you were the one that found it. Right. I was I was reading the online help because someone asked a question in a bug report. And because I was reading the online help, I saw a mistake in the online help. And like an open source developer, I said, well, I got to be able to fix that mistake. So I fixed the mistake in the open in the help. Okay. So that may or may not be there in 4013. But we do know about the security advisory. Yes. That's definitely there. And Absolutely. That's, that's the reason why there's really nothing else here. Because the security team, anytime there's a security release like this to Jenkins core, 
There's security releases all the time, but a lot of time those are just plugins and not core. And what security likes, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, is if it's a Jenkins core release from a security perspective, they don't want anything else going in. Well, and it's you're, ex you're exactly right, and it's not even just Jenkins core, right? When the security team encourages a plugin maintainer to release a security fix, they will usually they will advise them strongly. Please base your security fix on exactly one commit that you make to fix the bug after your last release. So you released version five. The, the security fix should be in the next commit after that with no intervening commits because you don't want your users to be at risk of some unrelated regression blocking them from using your security fix. Time is hard. Getting things, <laughs> timeline is hard. Time is hard, but thankfully, Git provides a directed acyclic, acyclic graph so that time is, is just fine. <laughs> hey, wait a sec, put that away. Security advisory, let's take a look at it because it's actually, to me, was sort of like one of these types of issues. Right, well, and, and notice that these kinds of issues are being found even now all right, this is a long-standing thing, and and so there is there is value to security research all the time in existing software. Absolutely. So, there there were a number of items, but the only one that applied to core is this top one. Correct. Jenkins applies formatting to the console output of builds, transforming plain URLs into hyperlinks. Which is a good thing. That's very desirable. We like hyperlinks in our build logs, right? I like them very, very much because I want it clickable so that my browser will take me there. But prior to now, it doesn't sanitize or correctly or properly encode the URL. How many years? Right, exactly. <laughs> this and, and this is one where, hey, we've liked having embedded URLs and they're very helpful. And that lets my build job output plain text, the, the URL, and then it becomes clickable for the user who's reading the log. Very, very helpful. And yet, cross-site scripting vulnerability. Yep. And then there were a handful of other plugins. Were there any, so there were a few, actually, let's, let's go to the bottom. Because if you've never taken a look at a security advisory, since we do have a minute, because mm -hmm. this is really the only thing that's there. And Michi, I see your questions, and we'll get to it there in just a second. Uh, if we go down to the bottom, there's always a severity block in affected versions, the fixes, but then there's always, not always, many times, there's also, as a publication, there are no fixes for the following plugins. Because reasons. Well, well, and, and there's a hyperlink there that tells you the reasons. I love the reasons. Ah. It's because the security team is confident that people should know about a problem even if it's not fixed. It, it's, right. it's much better for a consumer, for a user, to know that there's a security issue and then make an intentional choice whether or not they should continue using that thing. If we hide the vulnerability or fail to disclose it, there's a, there's a real risk that someone will be surprised then, oh, there was this vulnerability you, you knew, you didn't tell me, I could have removed that plugin and been safe from that vulnerability. So, a handful of uh, plugins, one to core, I think that's the first core security we've had in a while. It, it has been several months, yeah, it's been multiple months since the last time we did a, a core security release. Okay. And look. That's it. Let's let's go over and answer answer Meech's question real quick. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Does Jenkins' next baseline version include all the fixes, improvements, etc., from the weekly releases from the previous baseline version? And, and the answer is yes. yes. So so for example, two point four hundred fourteen point one will include everything that was in two point four hundred fourteen plus several backports. Now in this example, in today's example. 2.414 has the security vulnerability. So you can be confident that the security vulnerability fix will be backported to 2.414.1. So that's something from 4.16 that will be backported. So yes, everything in 4.14 and before is in the baseline. And then we add some additional things like backports of security fixes to be sure that 4.14.1 will be nice and stable. And probably your help fix as well. 
Yeah, probably. Well, the, the help depending fix on where definitely. Going. The help, yeah. help fix definitely because it oh, was in four, two dot four eleven, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, Mitch, I hope that answered your question. Yep, got it. You are quite welcome. Uh, anything else, Mark? Again, this is a nice quiet one, which is yeah. what we expect, especially on a security release. Right. Uh, four weeks from now, we have two dot four fourteen. This is going to be another one. 2.4141. And <laughs> then that's right. going to be 2.4142. Correct. So the third one will mess everything up. Um, there's one feature coming in that that I have not been able to break my m muscle memory on yet. And Which we'll talk is? about it. I'm not going to say. I'm going to oh, save okay. it. Oh, okay. See you, see you in four weeks is a good answer. See you in four nice weeks. teaser for four weeks. Okay, yeah. good. All right. it's, it's, it's not hard, uh -huh. but it is... How, how, I can explain it to the point of when things move around, I don't like that very much. Right, right. And, and that is, you, you described muscle memory. You really yes. did. The, the phrase muscle memory really hints at we remember where things are placed and their location on the screen is a, is a thing. Good. So we'll we'll see and see how much uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth will happen after that release. Four weeks. So that's going to be August twenty third. Twenty third. Thank you. Right. Uh, at that point, I'll be a little bit older. So that's good. I'm actually older anyway, but it doesn't matter. Happy, we all will be. Happy birthday on your uh, getting older. Well, that's I was that that was last week. So uh, okay. You know, I'll be old now. I won't get into it all. Anyway, that doesn't matter to anybody else. So thanks for being here with us live today. Again, we'll be back in four weeks. Mark, thank you. You have a meeting to go to, so I have do. fun at your next meeting. I get to go trim this up for YouTube so people don't see the five-minute countdown at the front. All right. But anyway. Thanks, do Darren. All, do all the YouTube things. Give us a thumbs up, and have a great rest of your day.